and welcome to another one of my wood turning videos. This time we're going to be making some end grain bowls, a set of three. I start ab out by truing a uh, pre-prepared blank that's got a tenon match to my chuck jaws here, which makes some of the end grain hollowing possible. We're going to leave you in one position because I think you can see enough, but there are some versions of this video with multiple positions. So let me know if that's something that's helpful. Start out with some end grain hollowing. You'll see that uh, you can leave it relatively rough for this project. The chisel skips around and I don't use a lot of finesse with this particular cut because the scraper here forgives so many errors. You can start out with a heavy cut and then end with a very continuous light cut from the center of the bowl out to the edge. And that's all you gotta do. You've made the inside of a bowl. Using a pencil I measure the depth of the bowl, return the tool rest, and now sand away that pencil mark and refine the interior of the bowl. doesn't take too much. And then a parting tool, about an eighth of an inch or so away from that line I just made, gives me some opportunities to be much more efficient with the skew chisel and a target for the depth of the bowl. These cuts can be done either point up or point down. Today with this skew chisel and its grind I was doing better with point up. So there you see it. It makes good sense to often feel the for the thickness of that bowl and really shoot for even wall thickness. Just like in pottery, you get the best balance with even wall thickness from the lip to the base with only light imbalances. After a little groove, we introduce the wire and there's a nice decorative line that really sets the piece off. Any starts and stops with the skew are forgiven with the sandpaper here and I roll it over the lip just to round it ever so slightly for um, some tactile benefits. Here comes some oil on a paper towel and the parting tools cut the piece off. It's just that easy. And guess what? You're set up for another. This blank is about two and a half pushing three inches in diameter and maybe about seven inches long including the tenon. Just guessing. I didn't measure. Some more ingrain hollowing. I believe it to be a little bit more forgiving procedure than most people give it credit for. And as you can see, it's relatively quick. Especially when the scraper comes in here and forgives a lot of torn grain or whatever you may have. The key is that the scraper yields good chips and those nice ribbons. That means a good surface is being left. It greatly reduces your sanding time. Measure the depth again. Sand away that pencil mark. Here comes in a parting tool, about an eighth of an inch from the end defines the piece and a half inch skew defines the lip and then goes the other way to make the rest of the bowl. You don't have to leave a superior surface here because uh, sandpaper will forgive a lot of starts and stops in your skew movement. It's probably more important to leave an even wall. little touch at the point of the skew guides my fishing lure lead and sets that nice accent again. Then the sandpaper makes up for any uh, errant grain caused by such an accent. Here comes some oil. And with the parting tool, it's off. Would you like to see a third? 
because I happen to have wood for it. Here we go again. You can see I'm skipping all around. The point of the chisel is getting tossed around. It just doesn't matter. Just shoot for a relatively even depth. I do more cuts from the in from the center out in this particular project. And the scraper makes up for any differences. The shape of the scraper can easily define your properties there. Now my index finger on my left hand is staying still and acting as a pivot point. You can go back and review that if that's of any help. Here comes a pencil. It's it's green. The end is measured. Make sure to leave about as much wood on the left side of the pencil mark as I would be facing it towards the chuck as I've done there, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Parting tool sets up for some skew work to find that front rim. And a handful of cuts is often all it takes to really make a very reasonable bowl. You can take a lot more time on this and make a much more balanced piece, or you can shoot to make a basket full. People haven't commonly complained. The customers, when they see a basket full of these, they just pick the ones they want. This can be a very productive piece if you work quickly. A little accent little sandpaper and we're ready for the finish. I always try and round those front and back corners. Keeps it to be a much more safe piece. Some boiled linseed oil rubbed on will polymerize nicely later and be rather forgiving. The piece is cut off and we have the set of three now all we need to do is trim the foot. This is done by making a jam chuck, holding a relatively flat skew and making a slight taper. We can start to fit this piece. I hold the end of the skew between my right elbow and my body, hold the piece in my right hand, and guide the skew with my left hand. The idea is to make a taper s that the end of the piece will fit over. And I get aggressive here and think that I can possibly fit it without stopping the lathe. I always get ambitious like that. Truth of the matter is you probably save time unless if you've really got this down pat by stopping the lathe and cramming that piece onto the taper. Using just the point of the skew can make a nice finishing cut, making sure to leave the concave surface. I choose to add a touch of detail here. A little sandpaper forgives. And some oil finishes up. I stop the lathe for this about as fast as is reasonable. Tug the piece off and check my next bowl to see if it'll fit. If in my very first move that you saw in this video, if I taper my blank ever so lightly. My bowls in order from last off to first off should fit nicely on this jam chuck and sometimes overlap so I don't even have to shave anything off. Now you see another trade secret here. This piece did not fit perfectly. The, the rim of the bowl did not fit against the collar of the jam chuck. But with a little tip tap from the back of the skew like you saw there, I can make up for enough of its, its eccentricity. And about that fast I can be done. Stop the lathe, a little burnish with the heel of the hand, and the piece is off. See if I get lucky with this last piece, just trying to fit it on the old chuck. I'm always ambitious enough to try. On it goes, a tap with the skew, and 
way the piece flies. That's the only risk. Might fly across the shop. Or if you hit too hard, you might split the piece. In this case, I just need a light shave at the now burnished place that you can't see, but I can. Your loss. And you can get away with a mounting as sloppy as this. Kind of like in centering in pottery, you might eye that ring to see where it's eccentric and adjust it from there. The tip of the skew takes a nice little trimming cut. And a little addition of some detail. I foolishly stopped the lathe and have to restart it for getting myself. A little sanding, a little oil, and I believe we're done here. Here's some snapshots here coming up so you can see the finished product. From the bottom, no extreme consistency here, but it's not necessary for this project. Stacked very cutely, you can say aww. And here they are sitting side by side. A fun project I highly recommend.